Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, policy, uh, culture, politics, you name it, we talk about it right here. So please take a moment to like and share this video feed so that your friends can join in the conversation. Also want to remind you to go to fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. It is the coolest place to buy t-shirts, coffee mugs, hoodies, all sorts of pro Second Amendment gear and swag. Uh, know that every dollar that you spend at FPC Gear goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All righty. Well, you know, it, it's kind of one of the things that's that, that I always find uh, interesting is areas where, uh, you know, a lot of people, whenever you think guns, whenever you think Second Amendment, you always think issues largely that the right is concerned with. Uh, but there are a lot of areas and a lot of people that I know who, uh, who are on the left and recognize that some of the challenges that we are facing uh, in, in this culture that, 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 they're, that, that they're concerned with, that those on the left, in particular, uh, those, in the, uh, those, in, uh, those pe people of color, uh, those in, in, in urban communities, black and brown people, uh, you know, concerns that they seem to have that actually tend to cross the line, particular when it comes to firearms. And what I wanted to talk about today was kind of one of those subjects. And it's something that not a lot of people are talking about. And it's something that, that I said that I started talking about a, 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 a good while ago. And this has to do with the new war on guns. And what, what a lot of people are not understanding is that as more and more as, as society and states are pushing away from the idea of, of, of the war on drugs, a lot of the people who are fighting to get out of the war on drugs are now pushing a whole new war, and that's a war on guns. And what they're either they're failing to realize because they're you know most of them aren't really on the ground in their communities uh, or some maybe just some of them just don't care but what they're failing to realize is is that some of the victims of their war on on their war on guns are the same exact people that they were clamoring for and uh, some of the people who are per perpetrating it uh, are the that they were clamoring against are, are in fact the very same people and the impact is just the same this is deanwood a neighborhood in washington dc police here in the nation's capital are responding to a rising homicide rate by aggressively searching for illegal guns their specialized units are some of the most effective in the nation in getting illegal firearms off the streets but the tactics they use are eroding trust in the community. Outside Nook's Barbershop in Deanwood, the gun recovery unit stops and searches some of the men. Officers find a BB gun, and then things get tense. Right here. That's my bag, are you touching my bag, bro? Ain't you have nothing in it. Nah, Based on the gun I recovered off the guy. I don't care. That wasn't me. Get off me, bro. Get off. We've experienced throughout the district, but particularly in wards seven and eight, a number of recent, well-publicized, negative police and resident interactions. I've watched the videos of at least two recent incidents here in Deanwood, both on June 13th, a stop and frisk of several individuals outside of Nook's Barber Shop on Sheriff Road, as well as on June 25th, when MPD uh, returned to the scene and had a resulting confrontation with residents. What y'all seen in that video, that's nothing new. Like, we've been going through this in this community for the last three, four years. You got officers that hop out telling grown men, let me see your waistband, Joe. How is that a way to, how is that a way to say something to another grown man? It's like, sir, let me see your ID, sir, can you stop, let me talk to you. It's, it's just like, they look at everyone in the community like villains. See, the, the thing here is that uh, in, both of the cases, whether we're talking the war on drugs or, or the war on guns, 
the thing is, is that in many cases, the impact is, is, is the same in terms of how the policing is done and how this stuff is handled. And, and what, what those on the left who advocate for the war on guns, uh, while at the same time realizing that many of their constituents are being victimized by the war on guns. See, this is just one aspect of it. See, they're being victimized by it, not just by uh, the fact that, that, that the politicians are giving, are giving uh, law enforcement all sorts of encouragement to do whatever you have to do to go after these guns. And in many cases, uh, civil rights are, are a secondary thing. And the same thing was meant in, in the war on drugs. The, the civil rights oftentimes of individuals was a secondary thing. They were most interested in getting the illegal drugs. In this case, they're most interested in getting the illegal guns. In many cases, these guns are only illegal not because there's anything wrong with them. In many cases, these guns are illegal simply because, well, they don't like them. In many cases, a lot of these guns would otherwise probably be legal. But, you know, but, but we are talking about, now once again, we are talking about, though, in this case, illegal guns. But as you pass all of these laws, which either make certain firearms illegal or certain ammunition illegal, you make, uh, you make the certain people illegally illegal if they have a fire, if they, if they own or possess a fire. You make it illegal for them to own or possess a firearm. Or you make it illegal for anyone to possess a firearm in a particular place. As you make the laws more and more complicated, and in this case, you know, you make it more and more complicated, you make it difficult for people to comply, thus making them criminals. And then at the same time, at the same time, you have, uh, you have individuals in law enforcement. I'm not even saying that these are, this is most law enforcement, but the idea that your other civil rights, because we're talking guns, your other civil rights become suspect. In other words, here was an individual, they just stopped and frisked a guy. I don't, I don't know the details behind the video, whether, you know, whether or not he had a warrant or anything like that, but they frisked the guy and found a BB gun, and now they feel like they have a right to search everybody. What was their probable cause? I don't know. But my point is, is that they, to them, civil rights, because we're talking guns, all civil rights go out the window. Just like when it comes to drugs, all civil rights go out the window. Things like civil asset forfeiture. The fact that they want to, if you are, if you are arrested or suspected of selling drugs, that they can seize your car, that they can seize your home and your property. They can sell it before you're even convicted. Whether or not you are convicted, they can sell off your property. And you have law enforcement pushing for stuff like this. Once again, it's and, and the who are the people who are being disproportionately affected? Those of you, those of you who support, those of you who are black and brown, who support the left, understand this. Yeah, you're pushing for lighter sentences and to be able to get out of jail and reducing sentences on, on all these drug offenses. Well, all they're doing is they're turning around at the same time and they're taking all of, first of all, they're creating all these new gun crimes, which is going to make, which is, makes it very, very difficult to comply with in the first place. And then they're using the same exact tactics, which you decry, which you say is wrong. They're using those in order to enforce these laws. And then you're going into a system where nine, over 94% of all of the felony convictions or all of the convictions are done via plea deals, meaning chances are you aren't going to get your day in court or these folks are not going to get their day in court. And they're going to wind up right back where you say the man or the system is is trying to put them where you say the war on drugs put them. So I think it's important that we that we honestly that we that we take a look at that. In particular, that understand that the war on in particular, the war on guns, it's not a new thing. It's not the first time that the war on guns has been about going after people of color. The very first gun control laws that were put in place were to keep Native Americans from being able to own or purchase firearms or ammunition. 
in California. That was the 1850s. Then in the 1920s, laws were passed in order to keep in order to keep uh, uh, Mexicans and Chinese from being able to purchase firearms. And then you had the 1970s or six, I'm sorry, 60s. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the banning of open carry in the state of California and the Black Panthers. Now, that was that was Republicans and Democrats, including Ronald Reagan. But the war on the war on guns has just as much been an attack or, or just as much disproportionately affected black and brown people as the war on drugs. And the thing that makes it all even worse is that as we have made drugs illegal, guess what? They haven't gone anywhere. The more we made drugs, the more we, the more we increased the penalties on drugs, the more people used drugs, the more people sold drugs, the more people wound up in jail because all of that was illegal. And the same exact thing, and I am tell, I'm telling you this, the same exact thing is going to happen as we increase and we ramp up or we allow them to ramp up the war on guns. Because just like this cartoon says, you know, we would get rid of guns. If we just made them illegal like we did drugs, that would take care of it. Because all of the bad guys with guns would just poof, go away. Eh. No, not only would that not happen, but the people who live in the communities that are, mo are mostly victimized by these bad guys with guns, those law-abiding citizens, the, vic the potential victims, they would be made victims because they are the only ones that you would be disarming. Because let's just be real. When you unarm people, you are, at, you, you are making victims out of them. You are increasing violence because you are telling predators that they are unarmed. And predators, in, whether, it's in the, whether it's in the natural or in the nature, whether it's in nature or it's in society, predators seek after the weak. They go after the weak and the disarmed. People... People and those who do not, ha those individuals who do not have the ability to defend themselves. That's what predators do. And that is all that the war on guns is going to do. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We very much appreciate you guys for, for watching Coffee with Craig. Please remember to like and share these videos. Tell your friends about the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Gotta use them or you're gonna lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.